Hi everyone and welcome to my talk. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so incredibly excited to be part of Virtual Jane Austen Con and my talk is titled A Deep Dive into Miss Lamb, Exploring the Life of the Wealthy Black Heiress in Jane Austen Sanditon. Jane Austen's final work, Sanditon, published in 1817, showcases new characters and landscapes not seen in her previous publications. This unfinished book features Miss Lamb, a wealthy Black heiress from the West Indies, who visits the town of Sanditon on vacation. In my lecture, I analyze her character in the broader context of the 19th century in England. By exploring her character, one can learn more about race relations in England, Britain's West Indian colony, and the significance of her upper class status in the novel. Due to the unfinished nature of the book, delving deeper into the historical context and looking at similar literature provides a more detailed character map of Miss Lamb missing from the original text, bringing her story to life. I also will examine the television show Sanditon to see how the program brings Mrs. Lamb's story to life while exploring the parallels between the novel's adaptation and historical context. The creators use the original material of the text for the first episode, but then venture off creating a more fleshed out storyline as the series progresses. And just as a quick refresher, so the book follows Charlotte Haywood, the eldest daughter of a family of 14 siblings, who is invited to stay with Mr. Tom Parker and his wife, Miss Mary Parker of Sanditon. She accepts the invitation, excited to see the once quiet town transformed into a bustling, must-see seaside getaway. While staying at the Parker, Charlotte meets the eclectic class of Sanditon's residents, including, for example, Lady Denham, a woman of substance or means of an aristocrat or something. Determined to stop the Sanditon's development, hypochondriac Parker clan of Arthur, Susan, and Diana, and Sidney Parker, Tom's handsome younger brother, along with a variety of travelers who are on holiday. Miss Lamb, a West Indian woman, arrives for vacation in Sanditon, the only character mentioned by her race in the entire text. Austin describes Miss Lamb by writing the following. Miss Lamb's mixed race heritage indicates that one parent of hers belonged to the white population in the British West Indies. The West Indies was home to a large white male population that had migrated from the United Kingdom. By the end of the 18th century, white males made up over 60% of places such as Jamaica. And these numbers increased with the rise in white immigration, reduced half European children. Britain's anti-miscegenation laws were much more relaxed in contrast to those in the United States, for example. Miscegenation was socially not as accepted and society discouraged the relationships. However, white men would still have romantic relations with black women, regardless of these laws. Miss Lamb's characteristics make her well-liked. The characters around her display interest in learning more about her origins and personality. Her descriptions are similar throughout the book and Austin mentions key parts of her personality repeatedly as though wanting the readers to hyper-focus on these qualities. Austin rarely describes race in her books. Her writing style centers on specific qualities of characters such as beauty, intelligence, and wealth. Austin includes the descriptions of Mrs. Lamb's demeanor and wealth while simultaneously describing her race. Unfortunately, the incomplete story did not allow Austin's ideas to fully evolve as intended to. By exploring the historical evidence from Austin's time, one can explore Mrs. Lamb's character and why she chose to make these literary choices for her character in her final book. Britain abolished the trade in enslaved peoples in 1807, but eliminating enslavement did not occur immediately. Abolition a reaction to the enslaved rebellions of the 1790s show the enslaved people's strength, inciting fear in the English colonial residents. Even after England outlawed the trade in enslaved peoples, a new system replaced it to maintain the country's wealth and production, and this was called apprenticeship. According to David Lambert's article, An Introduction in Caribbean Empire and Slavery, he states the following.
The transition to this new system benefited the British enslavers by allowing them to continue their practice under the false condition that those enslaved would have access to, quote, freedom. The political systems in place in the Caribbean ultimately valued the profit the trade of enslaved peoples brought, making this change a false sense of freedom disguised as continued exploitative labor and control. Austin mentions Miss Lamb's fortune almost every time her name gets brought into conversation. Austin writes the following. She has more wealth than anyone in Sanditon. The book does not describe how she acquired this wealth, but one can look at the systems in place that created wealth for Britons. Estates in the West Indies had a one crop cash economy. Creating a one crop estate meant harvesting a single profitable crop to export to the islands. Harvesting popular crops made them more accessible and cheaper to export. The West Indies mainly harvested sugar. During the 16th century, sugar was exported to England, making it expensive and mostly available to the upper class who could afford it. Sugar's new accessibility in the later centuries allowed England to grow their economy by selling the crop to other countries and to create a monopoly on sugar. The sugar's popularity required more enslaved labor in the Caribbean to meet the new quota. This began in the 1640s in St. Kitts. Sugar production required large amounts of livestock, laborers, and machineries to harvest and store it. The economy boomed with the increase in enslaved workers who were sold for seven pounds each during the 1600s. However, those prices increased as the demand for their labor grew in the 19th century. Sanditon, the show, explores the sugar industry by making it the source of Georgiana Lamb's income, particularly in season two. She explores her wealth and how her father acquired it. Her father in the adaptation has passed away, selling his sugar plantation, freeing all the enslaved peoples. The choice presents a percentile fantasy more palatable to current viewers, giving his character a redemption arc that rarely occurred in the historical context. The show addresses the abolitionist movement and the fact that the British abolishment of the trade in enslaved people does not mean the practice itself has vanished. Due to the sugar production's cruel nature, Georgiana rallies support by banning its use in Sanditon. This is her way of protesting the trade. This comes, of course, with resistance, particularly from Lady Denham, who believes Georgiana to be a hypocrite. Georgiana confronts her during the scene in episode 12, during the garden party. I really enjoy the way her character handles these difficult situations and questions, but I am also critical of the blame being entirely on her. The relationship between her parents is described as one of mutual affection, even though her mother was enslaved, which adds to the irony. There seems to be an emphasis on forgiveness and the idea that once other British enslavers follow in her father's footsteps, that will be the overall solution. But I disagree, because even though he made the right decision, that doesn't redeem this situation as neatly as the show tries to. I enjoy seeing Georgiana's character learn more about these social issues over the series, but I also feel there is an exception on her to mend the situation that her family's decisions created when she was merely born into these circumstances. Others rally support for Georgiana because they know her and she has created respect and Sanditon by season two, having a group of very loyal friends and the relationships she's formed also come from having this influence and wealth. Miss Lamb coming from a wealthy family had several options when it came to her inheritance. Due to her unknown status of her family, a few possibilities may have occurred depending on her situation if we look at it in the context of what's just in the book. Inheritance laws changed throughout the centuries in England. During the feudal period, inheritance was divided into thirds, one given to the Lord, another to the church, and the final to the family. As the government transitioned by 1692, families would be able to write anyone into their will. This meant that illegitimate children would be able to claim part of their family's fortune after their death if they were included in the deceased will. The West Indies formed legal rules and systems based on British laws. However, there were still societal rules and stigmas that created difficulties for mixed-race children 
securing their inheritance, especially if they resided in the West Indies, since British law did not apply there. There were conditions placed on these children before they were approved of inheritance. One of those was children needed to be free. If they were born enslaved, their overseer had to give them their freedom or they would not be allowed to get their inheritance. If they were illegitimate children living on someone else's land, they were seen as the quote, property of that estate and relatives could not claim them. Miss Lamb seems to have her freedom because she can freely travel to England, even under the guidance of a chaperone. As the Miss Rake's population increased, constant disputes between inheritance persisted, but racial differences continue resulting in rising tensions amongst mixed children. We can also look at others in similar situations at the time and know that Miss Lamb would have gained some form of wealth and guardianship specifically because of her illnesses are described in the book. Amanda Ray Prescott wrote an article um, and this explores the discourse surrounding the release of the show, specifically the influence of social media in discussing fan opinions. She starts by mentioning the back and forth on social media from white fans of the show who wanted, quote, an escapist adaptation. And those who saw this adaptation as a way to finally showcase Miss Lamb, the only canonically black character in Austin's work. Prescott lists multiple instances specifically on Twitter of white fans' reactions to the series, highlighting the fear that the premiere of Bridgerton created due to that show's colorblind reimagining of history. I watched the series this summer in preparation for this lecture, and I had heard about this discourse before. I was hesitant to watch the show Sanditon out of fear that the character of Miss Lamb would be represented in a negative light. I think Sanditon, unlike Bridgerton, follows the traditional Austen model of sticking to her white characters and storylines, even though you can read a novel such as Pride and Prejudice and create a completely BIPOC adaptation that still discusses the key components of the book, but adds a more diverse spin. The Austin purists, as Prescott writes, are more concerned with their own escapist fantasies, ignoring the critical discourse by BIPOC fans. Continuing on with inheritance as a central point in Georgiana's character in the adaptation, she cannot inherit her fortune until she is 21 and her guardians are quick to have her marry off by then. Georgiana has been informed that Sydney, her previous guardian, had traveled to Antigua to wrap up some affairs with her father's estate after getting a letter from the family lawyer. However, it is revealed that he was representing her in court because of a lawsuit against her. Another relative of her father viewed her as unfit to gain her inheritance because of her mixed race status. Sydney triumphed in court, but this did not stop the relative from conjuring a new scheme. However, the show in the first season does fall into the trap of creating a tragic romantic plot for Georgiana. She had a lover named Otis, who was the reason she was forced to leave London by her guardian, Sydney. Otis, a black man and a member of the Sons of Africa, truly loved Miss Lamb. However, his character progressively gets worse until the breaking point between the two characters. I felt incredibly excited to see them together because of the sheer lack of black romance given to characters particularly in this time period. Once Otis had been taken out, it made the TV show fall into the trap of creating another tragic mulatto plot line. This continues into season two with Charles Lockhart. Charles Lockhart comes to Sanditon and he's an artist who takes interest in Georgiana. He dazzles the residents, leaving Georgiana romantically interested in him. But of course, by the end of the season, he leaves Sanditon after trying to convince her to run away with him and letters arrive detailing the court case, letting everyone know that Mr. Lockhart was actually the relative who tried to sue Miss Lamb. This portrayal perfectly mirrors the lengths people will go to ensure a woman of Miss Lamb's racial makeup gets barred from receiving her rightful share, while also feeding into the trope of denying her romantic love. Two other characters are married off in the show, and I understand that Miss Lamb herself loathes the idea of a baseless marriage, but there is a way to write a romantic plot while also keeping the integrity of her character, and I truly wish that the show would be able to do this at some point. However, no matter the privilege of Black women are given, they still will never be equal in the eyes of British society. Austen's work opens the conversation surrounding Black wealthy women during this era and reflects the changes occurring in the time she wrote the book before her death. By exploring the show and the book, we learn the way rich Black women lived in British society. The show links these points, adding to the original story, making Miss Lamb a more fleshed out character. 
The show also does a great job to stick into the more historical background and socio-political issues that arose during that time. However, even with the positive changes to make Miss Lamb's life more palatable, this further demonstrates the question, is a fictional happy ending possible for a Black woman living in a town that is built on the racial exploitation of Black people? And what will the writers consider an appropriate happy ending for her story? The need for creating media today with stories centering Black women's voices, specifically in period pieces, stems from a place of wanting to include their voices into the conversation that has been dominated by white stories only. Sanditon, unlike other shows, showcases the reality of 19th century England, trying to stick to a more historical storyline, but it is influenced by a modern lens in the decisions it makes to make certain characters more likable. Miss Lamb's story is important because she was not the only example of a Black wealthy heiress in British literature and history. The stories of these women are abandoned for the same white-centered narratives, and while the show does have its flaws, overall it does provide a larger picture of her character that I believe the original text could not. I'm eager to see how the show progresses into the third season, and if Georgia will finally have her happy ending. Thank you so incredibly much for coming to my talk today. There will be links down in the description box for all of the resources that I mentioned in this video. Let me know if you have any questions or any comments or anything, please leave those down below in the comment section. And once again, thank you so much for virtual Jane Austen Con for having me here um, and giving this talk today. Thank you.